Hey everybody, this is Jameson. I have uh, some good friends, uh, neighbors that live um, right behind me. That's what neighbors are. <laughs> and uh, they love wine and have been to um, wine country in California several times and have some favorite bottles. And so they've asked me if I would be willing to slump those in the kiln. And uh, I thought I would just uh, show you what I'm working on here. So uh, the first thing I had to do was kind of give them a fair warning that uh, this type of gold paint, this enamel paint that's on here may not remain. And they said, that's okay. So I said, if you're, if you've got, you know, emotional attachment to any of these bottles, um, you know, please let me know. And they said, no, no, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. No big deal. So um, here's the first one that's got that gold paint on it. This one has this uh, blue enamel paint on it with some blue and gold on the back. And then um, this last one has this, uh, I don't know what color you'd call that, kind of tan uh, and a little bit of white ivory uh, enamels on there as well. So I'm going to clean these up really well. I I like to use, I've got some glass cleaner, but I also like just uh, vinegar and, and half uh, distilled water, a little 50-50 mix. Um, and so I'll clean those up and then I have a, a mold that I'll slump this into. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then I have some super sprite. Look how old this thing is. I don't even know if this is what it looks like anymore. Uh, but this uh, helps prevent devitrification, which can happen quite a bit on these bottles. Um, the important point in putting this on a bottle is to, uh, I just like to put it in a little bucket here and then I, I sponge brush it on. But you, you can only put it on the surface uh, where the glass is going to be on the... Uh, what, I'm saying this all wrong, where where there's air exposed to it, basically. So as I'm laying this bottle on the mold, you know, the back half will slump against the mold and the top half will be up against the air. You only want that super spray or um, spray A is something else that's used or a lot of people use their own, make their own homemade. Um, you only want that facing the air side. If it if it's around the back, if you will, then it can um, kind of ruin the piece. It'll look, it'll look nasty. So uh, I'll show you what I mean here in just a little bit. I'm gonna shake this up really well, pour a little bit into my container and paint this on my bottles. Okay, so I have uh, a little bit of a mess to clean up here. You see how I poured that back into my bottle. I want to reuse whatever I don't uh, brush on the bottle. And so here's the first one that I did. And after just a minute, it's already uh, fairly dry. Look, I bumped it and I opened up a spot there. So I'll hit that quickly with the brush. But it dries very quickly and just leaves a coat. As you can see, I only did the front half, not the back half. And, uh, and again, that's because you don't want it on the back half where it's not going to be exposed to the air in the kiln. So uh, I'll put one of these on the uh, mold and show you what I'm doing next. Okay, so I have this mold that I got used from somebody and funny story, it was too long to fit in my previous kiln. So I had a guy with a tile saw and we cut the bottom off because I knew that I wouldn't need anything very large. A wine bottle, standard size wine bottle, clearly fits in there just fine. So um, there's a little tip for you. We cut the end off and it worked fine. Now I have a big uh, big kiln and it doesn't matter but anyway this uh this mold still works just fine so i laid this on here i was very careful to uh lay it on there uh to what i thought would be a nice fusing straight uh angle if you will and uh, i'll use a kiln schedule i can't remember my firing schedule for these i'll go back and look in my notes uh, i think i got it from glass with a past but uh i'll talk about that in a little bit or i'll post it in the video description uh, so let's see what happens with this bottle and with these enamels Okay, so interesting result. I pulled it out. It's nice and shiny, no devitrification. The uh, blue logo on this one was still intact, but on the back, not so much. So the um, where this was touching the kiln, or excuse me, the the uh, uh, mold, um, it looks like some of that kind of fired funky. Some of it remained blue, most of it fired white, it kind of got real funky on the back end. So. Uh, interesting result on that one. I'm going to go ahead and put the next one in the kiln. Oh, and I used a firing schedule. I'll post it, so check the video notes, but I forgot that in when I went back to find my own notes, I forgot that I had a firing schedule that was really nice from uh, Creative Paradise. They make some of these molds, and so um, I just used the firing schedule straight off the Creative Paradise mold and was real pleased with it. The other thing that's of note about this bottle in particular is uh, this one had a, an innie bottom, if you will. I think both of these do as well. 
yeah, so you see where the uh, bottom is indented in. I find that those actually flatten better. Uh, you get kind of a nicer uh, flattening on the bottle and it kind of creates a natural uh, divot in there for, you know, cheeses or olives or whatever you're gonna put on there. Uh, so I happen to like these that have the any. Um, the other thing that's gonna be different, we'll see what this fire's like. Um, generally speaking, I think for, for like a platter use, a bottle that has uh, what I would call tall shoulders is a little bit better. So this one had, um, you know, th this lower shoulder, if you will. So once it comes out, I'll show you what it fires like. It's just not gonna flatten quite the same as this one. So anyway, we'll put the next one in and see what it looks like. Okay, sorry about the messy work area. Here's uh, number two. So this one came out really nice. Um, you know, it's hard to center the bottles in the mold perfectly, so this logo is a little off center. I'm, I'm a little disappointed by that. Uh, but generally, it fired nice. It's nice and clean, other than my fingerprints. I'm getting all over it. Um, and on the back, uh, it did pretty well. It, it, this um, enamel's picking up the kiln wash a little bit. So I took it into the kitchen, hit it with some vinegar and a scrubby, and got most of the kiln wash off, I think. There's still a little bit in some areas, so I probably need to do it again. Um, so, and then I have to re-kiln wash again, uh, my mold, because this keeps picking that, uh, kiln wash up. You're firing at a high temperature. This is not a standard slump in a mold, uh, where you tend not to pick up the kiln wash. This is going up to 1470. It is, you know, basically a full fuse. So I'm not surprised it's picking up that kiln wash. I hate messing with kiln wash though, so it's a little frustrating, but it is what it is. So, um, that's bottle number two. We'll go in with bottle number three next. Okay, here we are, the third and final bottle. The front looks good. The I, I lost more color on the uh, enamel, but you can still read it all very well. Uh, so, you know, generally I think they'll be pleased with this. And the back enamel pulled up all kinds of uh, kiln wash. This is frustrating. I, again, I just don't use kiln wash very much. So I decided not to do the uh, the idea about using um, paper. I went ahead and kiln wash, rewashed my mold again. And this has now picked up all of that. So I'm gonna have to spray this down with some vinegar again and uh, let it sit for a little bit and scrub that all off. Uh, and then we'll have that. Okay, so here I wanted to show you some different bottles and actually uh, help you learn from my mistake. So this was one where this is a very large bottle. And this is an example where, see here what I was talking about on the uh, wine bottles that had an any and how it kind of lays differently. Um, this was just a flat bottom and it folds traditionally folds over the top here and I just don't like the look as much. Now I had coated this with um, with the spray, <clears throat> super spray, but uh, I did not coat the bottom and then the bottom folded over and so now I've got uh, devitrification that happened on the bottom. Uh, you can you don't have to have a mold to fuse bottles you can fuse them flat i happen to have this uh piece of i don't know kind of curved ceramic you see that and so i use that often to make a little handle um i underestimated how much these bottles would squish out so this one squished out past the paper so did that one but more importantly they touched oh no i didn't realize that was going to happen so these guys are probably just going to go right into the into the recycling bin. Let's see if I can lift them up. Yeah, they're connected. Oh well, oops. Anyway, so, um, you know, you don't have to flatten bottles in a mold. You can certainly flatten bottles uh, just right onto your kiln shelf. Uh, if you want to use something that resembles uh, a little handle, you could do that. Maybe a big piece of sidewalk chalk would be nice. You could just do it flat, but I kind of like the idea of having a little handle. So, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little something. Um, give bottles a try. Make sure they're super clean. That's the main thing. And uh, if you enjoyed this, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll be posting more in the future. Thanks. Bye.